Welcome, everybody. Again, I am uh, Brax Nightfighter, and I have with me Rim. We are two MFers. Rim, how are we doing? Doing great. Thank you very much, Brax. All right. So, uh, you know, we've been talking about guilds and guild development and all that kind of stuff. And um, in the past couple episodes, we talked about our culture and we talked about recruiting. And so today we're going to talk a little bit about guild goals and uh, setting expectations for the, for the guild. Um, you know, and we, you know, if we're going down what everything that we've talked about, we've developed a culture, um, we've recruited the right people into the guild, and so now, you know, what what goals do we need to set, and what expectations do we need to set for the guild? Yeah, and, and I don't want our listeners to think that uh, any of the items that we've talked about are are acting within isolation. So your guild goals are going to affect your culture and your recruiting just as much as your culture reflects, affects your, your recruiting. And as we're going to talk about tonight, affects your guild goals. All of these items work together in sort of symbiosis. We've just kind of formatted this in a way to, to where we can walk down the ladder so hopefully people can see how all of these these various concepts work together. Yeah, absolutely. I think they they all you know work together and bounce off of each other and if uh if one of them falters it's going to affect the other ones as well so um it is important to you know even though we've kind of split it up and you know this isn't a prior you know prioritization of them it's more we just kind of split it up into different areas but you know if your if your culture fails then you know, your recruiting is going to fail or it's going to be hard to have goals and expectations so um, it, it is important that they all kind of go together and that they all s- sort of still have the same importance. Well, they definitely reinforce each other, which I think is what we're going to start reinforcing ourselves while talking about guild goals. You know, you when you're when you're putting together the goals for your guild, you have to really start thinking about the kind of players you have in the guild, the kind of culture that you have. To, to really understand what goals are achievable uh, or what goals are just going to, you know, frustrate your guild and cause people to eventually look for other avenues and options uh, to get where they're looking to go. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a fine line that you kind of have to, to straddle there where, you want to you want to challenge your people, and you want them to um, to to achieve better things for themselves and for the guild. Um, but you also know that if you don't challenge them enough, that they're gonna look for somewhere else to challenge them. So it's kind of a it's it's a very fine line, and there I'm I'm sure there are various thoughts out there as far as how how far you can push people, and um, you know again that sort of goes back to your culture. Yeah, and and to your point, you know, if you don't challenge them enough, they may get, you know, antsy and want to look for some greater challenges. Or if you don't challenge them enough, they start becoming disinterested in the game and and stop advancing and, and advancing your guild. So finding that right balance is always the 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 biggest challenge. And I think that's what we are out to talk about today is is how do you find a balance of your guild goals that match your culture and your recruiting. Yeah. Um, So, you know, we know that um, probably number one is knowing your, your culture and knowing your guild, knowing the people that are in it. Um, And then, you know, we already talked about making your chiefs, your goals achievable. Um, But I, you know, I think the things that you need to set for your, guild your goals and everything need to be realistic um but they also need to be flexible um because you're going to have you're going to have different challenges you're going to either within the guild um you're going to have people that aren't able to achieve those goals and they may feel some frustration with that um 
you know, people have real life stuff come up that may kind of alter um, your goals a little bit. So um, I think you have to be flexible and you have to be willing to kind of roll with the punches and, you know, maybe you set a goal and you're not going to achieve it right away. Um, and it's kind of how you, I don't want to say the word like smooth it over, but, you know, you keep everybody still um, focused on it, um, but know that you're maybe not quite there yet. Well, for sure. The the game gives enough guild challenges across the board that at some point, unless you're a uber competitive guild, you're not going to meet every challenge that the game is throwing at you at the same time. Um, if you're not a guild that is spending money, it's unrealistic to to put the 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 goal of especially as you know if you're a new guild to put the goal of hey we want to complete heroic sith raid but we also want to climb ourselves to um to GOTB those goals aren't mutually exclusive but to some level they are because a lot of the teams you need for one are not going to necessarily be the teams that you need for another. And if players are playing in a more casual setting, it's nearly impossible to for them to invest in both of those goals at the same time. So you need to be sort of wise on what your team, what your culture, what sort of, you know, what recruiting, what sort of players you have in your guild, on being realistic on what they can actually achieve. To try to put too much on players ends up becoming overwhelming. It prevents you from ever reaching your goals. That creates frustration. That creates discontent within your guild. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna either lose people or it's just not gonna be fun. So you'll you'll lose people to other guilds, or you'll lose people because they'll just retire and they'll just stop playing the game because when you when you try to push people to achieve a goal that they're not able to get to then it's it's just not going to be fun for them anymore and they're they're they're, they'll just they'll hang it up or they'll go somewhere where um where the where the goals are a little more flexible yeah so it's it's a very subtle process uh of looking at you know in fact uh, i would typically argue Find out what your most achievable goal is. And there are some certain exceptions, and we'll get into that here in a minute. But find out what your most achievable goal is as a guild. What 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 goal is achievable and will benefit your guild the most moving forward is the one that you should prioritize and then start looking through the other guild goals and figuring out where does it fit on the priority? How hard are we going to enforce these sort of concepts? Uh, how much are we going to build these standards into our guild rules, going back to our culture conversation, uh, in order to move forward as a guild and keep people engaged, involved, and having fun in the game? Yeah, and I think that's where you almost have to ask yourself, too, like what sacrifices need to be made to achieve my current goal? Um, you know, there are times where you know, you may have set a, a specific goal for the guild and that takes away from another aspect of the game. And so you that's where you almost have to weigh it out is is it is it worth it to not put as much emphasis in this area so as that we can achieve this goal. And I mean I even think about, you know, my my own gameplay. Um yeah, I mean that's kind of how this game works where you know, you, you want to achieve one thing. And so that takes away from another aspect of the game. Um, and so I do that on a personal level, but I think we also do that on the guild level as well. Well, for sure. I mean, this is a resource management game. And, and unless you are a, a, a spender, somebody spending money, but I think even most spenders look at the game somewhat in this way. No one wants to spend more than they need to. Uh, it's a resource management game. And so guilds need to do on a, on a holistic level what players are doing on an individual game level 
and that is manage the resources available to them as best as they can. And to do that, you have to build goals and stay the course. But you made a comment, Brax, that you have to be flexible. And why is that? Well, because you, I mean, it's going to, you ha- you have to be able to be flexible because otherwise you're going to have things thrown your way that are going to change that. Um, and, and the game is changing always as well. So you have to be able to, you know, flexible, be flexible with the game and know that when different things are brought to the forefront, like you, you might have to alter the goal that you put so you can achieve those particular new things. Uh, so I, I will, I will talk about most of ours experience at one point in time, we had lost um, over the course of a year, three TW battles. And then all of a sudden relics came out. Well, our guild was never, was one built on depth, not built on top level strength. And once relics came out, we were not prepared to immediately be able to be successful with the internment wars. And so that we had to change our guild goals. What was interesting about that is we were severely underperforming in tournament battles. Um, and we switched our focus to tournament battles. And you've heard our previous conversations, if you listen to our other podcast, that most of our believes that TB now leads into TW success. Well, that belief came from having to make that adjustment as a guild. And we noticed our rewards started getting better that across the board, our team started improving faster. Uh, I would say it was one, while it was, it was hard to accept at the time, it was one of the big lessons that we learned going through that of being adjustable, looking at the new game modes that come in and understanding their importance and how you may need to switch your goals, which the direction your guild is moving towards something that is more effective. And... I think the other important thing there, and especially in that instance, is that you also have to do a fairly good job at um, explaining that and communicating that to your guild as well. Um, For a lot of us, there was a lot of longtime players that were used to, you know, dominating in territory war. And and so it was sort of, uh, we had to, change people's mind a little bit and sort of re readjust everybody a, a little bit and let them know like, you know, y- yeah, we're still going to try and it's difficult. Um, but it's going to actually benefit us more to put our effort here and sort of spelled it out like long term. And I think that that's probably one of the next things there is you have to, look ahead as well. So you're, you're going to be setting a goal, but you almost need to look two, three steps ahead and Mm -hmm. say, you know, once we get to that, this goal that we've set, what's next, what, what is the next thing? Because that actually could alter your current goal a little bit because you might have to tweak some things so that it sets up that next or second or third goal down the line. For sure. And, and, for any of most of our members that are listening, we never deprioritize deprior- TW as something that is enjoyable, fun, engaging gameplay that we expected people to participate in because that's our culture. We expect our members to participate in every game mode and do their best. We just realized, and we'll get into this more in our next episode, that the player development needed to shift from one goal to another goal. Right. And I think, um, you know, I, I think it was important that, um, that we kind of got everybody on board with that too. Um, because, you know, ultimately they're, they're the ones that are going to be doing the work and, uh, and to, to achieve the goals and everything like that. So I think getting that buy-in from everybody and I, and I think, um, 
you know, you need to also get feedback from the guild. And so when you present these new ideas or, you know, like for us, when we talked about like, you know, we're going to shift our focus a little bit more towards TB versus TW, um, you know, we, we opened it up to feedback. Like, what, what do you guys think? And, um, you know, we gave, tried to give as much information up front. Um, you know, these, these are the rewards that we can earn. This is, um, how, if we build this team, it can actually affect territory war. Um, so I think, you know, we sort of sourced some feedback, um, from the guild as well to, uh, to help kind of reinforce that buy-in. You make an excellent point there. Again, this goes back to culture, understanding your guild members and, and understanding when is the right time to engage your guild members on, on what they want to accomplish. And then when is the right time to just know? Um, and I think the challenge pit was a, a great example of this. We were very aware that uh, based on our international guild nature, that it was nearly impossible and self-destructive for us to try to push our guild members to all log in at the same time in order to accomplish a raid that, yeah, the rewards, they're okay. Uh, I, I definitely wouldn't kick those rewards out of bed. But uh, the rewards were not high enough for us to bring our entire guild to bear to put them through something that was completely unrealistic for our guild structure to try to accomplish. And so we never prioritized it. We definitely would launch the raid and we'd allow people to play around with it, but we never made it a priority. But now that they're changing the structure, we're starting to change our conversation about how we could potentially, and we, we've yet to see exactly how this is going to work out, but we now feel like we're in the ballgame. And our type of guild now has a chance to start making that raid part of our future goals, something that we want to complete. But it's but with the current format, it no longer becomes something that is going to single-handedly tear our guild apart. Yeah, and that's that almost goes back to my question: like, what what sacrifices do you need to make to achieve that goal? And you know, in the in the current format before the change, um, you know, the sacrifice of trying to get everybody on at the same time, um, you know, potentially uh, frustrating people because they were going to have to either stay up late or get up really early or you know try to play at inconvenient times um, was was going to be the biggest challenge. And I think for us and for especially our culture that we developed, that wasn't a sacrifice that was going to be worth the rewards that we would potentially get from that. I think a lot of guilds make similar mistakes. You know, for instance, you know, say you're a newer guild and you're, you're looking at, GOTB rewards versus I, IPD rewards. You know, do you do you make that jump up in order to get those better rewards? But then a lot of your guild members still want to finish off their you know Imperial probe droid. Those are conversations that you have to either have with your guild or have had with your guild or be very well aware of what your culture within your guild is looking to do so this is a constant evolving scenario where you're changing your guild's goals to match what your guild's culture what your guild's recruitment and ultimately what we're going to talk about is your guild's player development yep and like anything in life to um take the time to celebrate your successes oh for um, sure be, you know because there's a lot of work that an effort that everybody does within the guild to achieve those things. So, you know, recognize it, celebrate it. Um, you know, we even, and I know some other guilds have done this too, um, with, with TB, um, you know, at Christmas time, we took, we took a little break and we went back and, and did Hoth. Um, and that, that was more, I, there were some people that, um, 
maybe didn't have as much time to play during that time, but also it was sort of a reward for all the effort that we had put into TB up to that point. So it kind of gave everybody a chance to gather themselves and take a deep breath and maybe reflect on the hard work that they put in. And the hard work they're putting in because Hoth was so much easier for the guild. They're like, oh, I thought this was hard, but it's actually fun because if we were still playing Hoth, I just hit auto. There was a lot of lessons to be learned when we go back like that. Sure. And it just goes to show that um, when when it's just super easy, it doesn't mean it's as fun. And so they, I think people still want to be challenged to a certain extent. Um, that kind of goes back to our point. Like you got to know how far you can push that challenge and um, how far you can get people. And that kind of leads into our next discussion for the, for the next episode. And um, that's player development and um, how you look at, you know, each person in your guild and try to develop them to help better your culture and better your guild. And, um, you know, it, it, again, it's cyclical and all kind of works together. So, Looking Do you forward have anything to you want to add there? Uh, well, just looking forward to the final conversation. Uh, I, I think a lot of people now probably know how we're going to talk about player development. Um, the player development conversation is sort of the final piece of how you bring this full soup together of making a guild work from a theoretical standpoint. Um, I know a lot of people probably have been listening to our podcast and hoping we'd go into deep dives into legitimately how you put orders in. And at some point, we probably will be talking about those sorts of things, but we're just trying to create something that will last in the future to leave that foundation of understanding how you make a guild work, but also how you as an individual matter and work within a guild i think it's important for both officers and guild members to sort of understand how the how the soup is created yeah for sure i think um you you, from a just a a general guild member standpoint and not knowing um you know this is probably how decisions are being made um it may make some things make a little more sense to you. Um, it's like, oh, that's probably why they decided to do that or why, you know, why we're going in this direction or whatever. And so, um, you know, it, it is sort of a thing that everybody has to work together and um, figure out like what works best for the guild, what works best for individuals as well. Um, Absolutely. And, unless you have something to add, I think um, we've kind of, talked about everything that we need to talk as far as goals go and it definitely sets up a, another great episode there for player development absolutely brax enjoy talking to you tonight yes sir until next time we will see everybody later good night night